John here guys and welcome back to the FPV beginner series a series where you come to learn all of the basics of how to build a drone how a drone works how to fly a drone and everything that you need in order to get yourself up in the air now today we are talking about the flight controller the flight controller is your quadcopter's computer system and it has a number of components on board and it tells your uh, quadcopter what to do, how to fly, how to behave. And let's talk a little bit more in detail about how this thing works. You can see this is a 30 0.5 millimeter by 30.5 millimeter square circuit board chip. This is my personal favorite uh, flight controller of all time, the Hyperlight F4, but uh, any modern day uh, ch flight controller will pretty much be good. The F4 is standing for the F4 processor. That is this large board in the kind of in the center of the back here. Um, there is also a newer F7 processor available. For our purposes, the amount of computing that needs to be done for our quadcopters, an F4 is perfectly fine. But if you want to be future-proof, you can also get the F7 for if newer software developments happen, um, you may be able to take advantage of those features later on. You'll also see a number of other chips on here. Um, those are going to be your accelerometer, which is gonna be used to tell your craft which way or how fast it's going. Uh, they're also gonna have a gyro on board that's gonna help to tell its orientation in space. And uh, there is going to be a series of regulators, uh, a regulator that will allow you to input full uh, battery voltage power to the flight controller and then output uh, different voltages. So you're typically gonna have a five volt output on here and a three point output, uh, three volt output. Um, now, if you think about your flight controller like the computer of your quadcopter, that is probably the best way to think about it. And if you've ever built a computer, you know that you're installing different components that are gonna interface uh, into that main computer unit. Uh, and if you say, John, I've never built a computer. Well, you are aware that there's a thing called a computer right there and you probably use one, right? Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television and on this invention, they show shows, right? Yeah. Well, anytime that you plug something into your computer, uh, different peripherals, whether it's your keyboard and mouse, your printer, your scanner of any type, anything that you've ever plugged in, um, those are different accessories that do different tasks connecting to your computer, whether it is to be able to input commands. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. The keyboard. How oh, quaint. In uh, instances such as your keyboard and mouse or perform a function like a printer. This is the exactly the same, but the functions that are being performed are slightly different. You'll see a number of solder pads on here. That's because for your flight controller, you're gonna be soldering these peripherals, these accessories onto there. And um, on a computer, what you would call a port, on your flight controller, you would call them a UART, that is a communication interface um, point for you to be able to connect different things. Now, for pretty much every quadcopter out there, you're gonna be connecting uh, three or four major things. You're gonna be connecting your receiver, which is gonna to connect to the flight controller. That is going to allow you to transmit through your transmitter or your radio stick movements, which are gonna be relayed over the air to the receiver that is then wired to the flight controller. Those commands are gonna be sent over to your flight controller, which are gonna be processed through the flight controller's onboard processor. It is gonna run those through the PID controller on board, which is your PID controller, which is going to determine how your quadcopter responds to those stick movements. In other words, if you apply a full stick movement to the 
right is that going to roll you um, fully around in one 360 degree revolution if you have your rates set up your rates are what determines how far per second you maneuver in each direction now um, in addition to your receiver now before we go and talk about the other components your receiver is going to have three wires connected you're going to have a power or five volt most receivers do take five volt for FR Sky or Crossfire. Now, if you use Spectrum, you may be using the 3.3 volt. Uh, they do different power, so you would be soldering those to a different port or UART on the board. Uh, you're also gonna have a ground and they're gonna have a signal. So much like the way that you plug in your gaming mouse that lights up and has the laser on the bottom in order to get the precise gaming movements for headshots every time, uh, those three wires are on board on those USB uh, connectors. So power, ground, signal. The next thing that you're going to be having on here is an interface for your camera. Guess what? You're also going to have three wires there. Power, ground, signal. Now, your cameras typically can take a variety of voltages. They can be powered by a 5 volt pad on here. There's additional 5 volt pads on there. Now on this uh, particular flight controller, the harness connector at the front, that harness is going to connect to your electronic speed controller. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, that uh, is also what is interesting about this one is that it kind of arranges those camera pads so that they are kind of facing the camera. That's why I like this flight controller. All of them are going to pretty much perform the same way so what you're looking for in a flight controller is your pad layout that allows you to either solder them up quickly easily have nice large pads that are easy to solder to and that are orientated in the proper way so that you have your camera wires going up your receiver wires going the other way your video transmitter transmitter wires going the other way so three um connectors into your camera same three um power ground signal now, then you're gonna have three wires for your video transmitter, but wait, your video transmitter is actually gonna have four wires. What's the fourth, John? Well, on the opposite side of the board, you'll have your outputs for your uh, video transmitter right here. So your flight controller will be connected to the video transmitter, uh, symbolized over here, and what your video transmitter is going to have is power, ground, signal, and then the fourth is an extra signal that's called smart audio. Smart audio is an additional communication protocol developed by Team Black Sheep, one of the most popular um, makers of video transmitters around. And they added a secondary communication. So in addition to sending or transmitting the image signal to your goggles to be able to view your first person or FPV feed, uh, they have an extra the communication protocol which allows you to wirelessly set the channel power and uh, for the channel and the power for your video transmitter. So if you're flying with other people, you're all transmitting video signals through the air. In order for me to only see my video signal and not your video signal, um, we all have to be on different channels, transmitting different channels, transmitting at an appropriate power level. If you're doing long range, you're gonna want a very high power level, like 800 milliwatts. Uh, if you are flying with other people very close, like at a race, you're gonna want a very low power level, like 25 milliwatts. Uh, so that's the four that are going there. Now, on your video signal, you notice that you have your camera signal going to the flight controller, and then you have, um, a signal going from your flight controller out to your video transmitter. Well, why is that? In the old days, we used to just connect those two signal wires together. You connect your camera signal directly to the video transmitter signal and you would get your image. Well, by putting it through the flight controller, you can add some things onto your screen. Your graphical or text-based on-screen display. All of the modern flight controllers today, along with the use of different flight controller software, Betaflight is the one that I use, which is the most popular open source software, but there's also Flight One, KISS, and a few others if you ever hear those. The flight controller takes that image from the camera, processes it, adds the on-screen display, and 
outputs that to the video transmitter so that when you get the signal image into your goggles, you have the image being captured by the camera and the on-screen display overlaid on top of that. And there is a variety of on-screen display options for you to choose, and you can arrange them around the screen uh, in Betaflight however you'd like. There's probably 30 or 40 plus different options for you to choose to display on your display. I typically always use the same five. It is, I like to have my craft name on the lower left in the middle lower bottom portion. I like to have my battery voltage. Now I typically use average cell voltage. Now average cell voltage tells you the average cell voltage per cell in your battery. Now when you're flying a small craft, like a two cell battery or a large craft with a six cell battery, um, you have to kind of do that mental math on what is the proper voltage to land on because you don't want to over discharge those batteries. But if you just use average cell voltage, your average voltage per cell is always going to be about 3.5 when you're going to want to land. So that may, takes that math out of it. So I want to look at that one number. And then on the other side, I have flight time. And that is a timer that starts once you arm your quadcopter. Above that, I've also started putting the throttle position so that when you are watching my videos, you can tell how much throttle I'm applying in order to do any particular maneuver and judge for yourself how powerful you think that craft is. There are other options available though. There is total battery voltage, there is video channel, there's telemetry, there is signal strength if you are using those. Uh, all kinds of stuff. There's crosshairs that you can put in the middle to be able to help. I mean, there's just so many things and Betaflight developers are doing a great job of adding those features for you to be able to put onto the screen. So, how do you tell which pad um, is what you connect to what? Well, uh, you're going to want to look on the product page for whatever flight controller you have so that you can see the pin layout, the pad layout, so you know which waters, wires to solder to where. Uh, what I really like about this particular flight controller though is, one, there is a flat side. A lot of times these components uh, are on both sides, but with the Hyperlite F4 you have a flat side that I usually point up and that allows me some uh, flat area to be able to mount things like my video transmitter or my receiver. And uh, if you watched the uh, overview, that's exactly the flight controller I'm using to be able to mount those. And I use that, uh, mount those with some 3M 30 pound double-sided mounting tape. Well, that covers connecting three things, John. There's a lot of other things available on here, like a GPS, you can connect a buzzer, you can connect LED lights that are addressable. Addressable means programmable, that you can program them to do different patterns and stuff like that. Um, the other things you can do now, uh, most importantly, what we haven't covered yet is what goes into the harness. Well, the harness is what typically goes from your electronic speed controller, um, which will have its own harness and it will go into your flight controller and plug in. Or it also has individual pads where if you don't like to use the harness, you can direct solder those wires yourself onto the flight controller. And those things are gonna be, so your battery is gonna be plugging into the electronic speed control. That's gonna be outputting full battery voltage. So for 2S, that would be like 7.4 volts. For 6S, it's like 25 volts. It's gonna be outputting that. And uh, so you're gonna have a power and ground for that. Then you're gonna have four wires for each of your four motors. That is what's gonna tell um, the flight controller, how much power to apply based on the throttle position that you are putting and the PIDs and all that stuff. Um, your flight controller also performs a number of calculations um, while you're in the air. It's, it's uh, calculating things like what orientation should I be in? If it senses an error, it will try to correct itself based on the PID settings that you have. The rates are also programmed into here, which as mentioned earlier, determines how fast you should be moving in any direction uh, based on those movements. You also have pads for current, which can measure current if your ESC is enabled for that, or telemetry, which can also um, measure your ESC telemetry. Now you'll notice that there is typically a button on your flight controller. The button is a boot mode button. So if you were gonna flash a new firmware 
uh, you would hold that as you apply power to it. That will put the flight controller into boot mode if you wanted to be able to load a newer firmware version onto it. Uh, the other thing it's going to have is a USB connector. That is how you actually interface from your um, computer to your flight control in order to program it. And the most popular software to do that is going to be Betaflight. They are currently on version 4.1. I'm still using version 3.57, which I find very reliable. Um, when I select a firmware version that I'm going to be using, I want something that is easily plug and play because I fly so many different models. Um, and uh, the newer 4.0 and 4.1s are still kind of uh, testing, although there is plenty of material out there in order for you to get a perfectly good tune on any one of those newer versions. It may fly slightly smoother. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how and what a flight controller does, what it's used for, how you would um, determine what to wire up. And for most of us guys, we're only gonna have those three those four things connecting your receiver, your camera, your video transmitter, and of course the harness from the ESC or electronic speed controller. So hopefully this gives you some idea. If there's any additional questions, please put them in the comments. I can make a follow up video to this to add some additional information to this. If you like this type of video, stay tuned because we have a lot more coming up very soon. We're gonna have one where we talk about receivers and transmitters. We're gonna have one where we talk about the video system, which is gonna include the video transmitter, the camera, and the antenna. We're gonna have another one where we talk about stick commands, how to fly a drone, what roll, pitch, and y'all mean for you. And then we will keep this series on going. I'm hoping to put out uh, beginner series videos at least once or twice a month, every month. And so keep those questions coming. We'll keep making this content for you guys. Thanks.